I'm going to show them the sample. And then we got to pause this as soon as it comes up. OK. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of Ask Jane the Groomer. Um, all right. We have a couple of questions that we wanted to start off with. Let me just pause this. Awesome. Oh, then, everyone that's drinking wine, cheers. Beer, <laughs> water, cheers. Whatever you're drinking. Whatever you're drinking. Cheers. cheers. Um, <laughs> it's the weekend, you know. Uh, anyways, so I wanted to start off with a question that I got from a really good friend of mine, Alessandro. <clears throat> Alessandro Ferry. He actually is down in Florida. He's a dog trainer. I met him back in Utah, and when we met him, I invited him over to the, the house that we were at, and um, the floorboards were torn up. We had like it was such kind of an I don't want to say embarrassing, but I was just like, oh my god, you know. I warned him before he came over. I was like, dude, this is just temporary, you know. Anyways, uh, we went to Kroger or what are the grocery store? What was it? Smith's, I think. Smith's. 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 Mm -hmm. But anyways, and then he bought some uh, salad, you know, like lettuce and stuff to chop up for a salad. Yeah, chicken salad. And got bought a rotisserie chicken, and that's what we fed. <laughs> Alessandro, um, anyways, out in Utah. but And we had a fire pit. Yeah, we did. A fire. He, great guy. I mean, awesome. Cool thing is, I never once felt judged, you know, uh, the situation we were in. Anyways, um, so he had a question that he sent me on Friday, Friday morning, and I just haven't had time to get back with him, and I told him, thank you so much for being patient with me. So here's the question. Um, he was saying, hey, June, couldn't find a good answer for his flea problem. I'm just paraphrasing right now. Okay, here, I'll go ahead and start quoting. Okay. I know you say brush more and bathe less, but since where I live right now has no backyard, I'm taking the dogs I have, which is six, to, the, to an empty dog park that I know, that I know, to work them and let them have room to run. But in Florida, we have a big flea problem, and I've already run into it a few times. And I want to avoid it and avoid any more. I was thinking of making homemade flea shampoo and washing them every time when I leave the park, since they have a hose there. But I wanted to know your opinion on that. It might be two to three times a week, depending on the weeks that I go. I saw some homemade flea shampoos with vinegar, dish soap, which Don, quote, you know, parentheses Don, and water. Um, one, one, and four ratio and wanted to see if that's too harsh or if you had an, an alternative. Last time they had fleas, I tried two different flea combs and it wouldn't grab the fleas every time. Single row of teeth and also the comb with double rows for fleas. Sorry for the long message, no rush response, you know, and I told him like, hey, you know, can I answer it on the show? So here's my response to that. First of all, um, Dawn dish, oh, okay, we got some, okay, Dawn dish detergent. <sighs> What can I say about Dawn dish detergent? It's dish detergent. It's dish detergent. Why are we why are we washing our dogs with Dawn dish detergent? First of all, even jo baby and like Johnson Johnson baby shampoo is uh is a different pH and it's gonna strip the acid mantle. What do you think Dawn dish detergent is gonna do? Um, and I really think with the science and the information that's coming out now, we're entering uh, the dawn of a new era. Um, where we just don't use Dawn dish detergent on dogs anymore as a degreaser. <clears throat> um, and also, if we're washing our dogs every two to three weeks, every two to four, you know, between two to four weeks, uh, yeah, it's okay, but really, um, you want to avoid that because it's going to dry out the skin, especially vinegar. Vinegar is drying. Um, so here's what I suggest. I suggest getting um, some avocado oil or some grapeseed oil. If you can afford it, some argan oil or even some emu oil, you know, that animal emu oil. Um, and then um, get some essential oils. Rosemary and lavender are both amazing at repelling fleas, ticks, uh, scorpions even. Lavender repel repels sc or scorpions. Um, but anyways, uh, get avocado oil or, um, you know, any kind of base oil. And the reason for that is that if you if you mix essential oils like rosemary or lavender with water it doesn't mix well with water and it's gonna it could be toxic you know at those levels but if you mix it with another oil oil mixes well with other oils and it'll dilute it and so basically you get avocado let's just say we get avocado oil right and <clears throat> get a you know dropper bottle and all you don't need to do is like a couple drops a uh, two two drops of rosemary two drops of lavender and fill up the rest of the bottle with uh avocado oil or grapeseed, grapeseed oil, whatever your base oil is. And then um, every time you, and, and, and hold, take that bottle with you to the dog park, and then every time your dogs play there, before they run 
and after they play before you go home rub a little bit of oil on your hands and rub it all over them and i would even say have one of those hand bristle brush about the size of your hand you know in your pocket and that way you can brush them with the bristle brush because a, a boar's bristle brush the natural animal hairs are going to grip the oils and spread them not evenly all throughout their coat and those natural oils now the rosemary the lavender mixed with the avocado oil it, so it's not harmful to the dogs will repel off the fleas the ticks and all those things naturally <clears throat> um, and I think that would be a much better option than washing them especially with that Dawn and vinegar uh, solution that you're talking about because what you're gonna see is flakes in about a three to two to three weeks about the next time you go to wash them again, you'll start seeing flakes. And you'll be like, oh, my dog's flaky, time to wash him again. And you wash him again. And now it's going to be more flaky. And then you wash him again. And then it just, it's a self-perpetuating problem. And, and it gets to the point where it seems like you can't wash them enough. They're flaky, they're greasy, they're nasty, they smell. And so rather than do that, I would say um, use natural oils, um, avocado oil, and a couple of drops of lavender and rosemary. Those are great. And I would, I would say like, um, like a spray bottle like this, for example. This is a, uh, how many ounces uh, is this? This is the samples we got. Yeah, anyways, probably like a 12 ounce bottle, right? About a 10, 12 ounce this bottle. This is an eight ounce bottle. Eight ounce bottle. Okay, so I would get like an eight ounce bottle of, uh, probably smaller than this even, like a four ounce bottle. Um, probably half the size, four ounce bottle, fill it up with avocado oil or grapeseed oil, and then put a couple of drops of lavender and rosemary, uh, rub it onto your palms and your hands, spread it all over your dogs before they play. That'll repel all the bugs. And then afterwards, and that way we're not stripping off their natural oils. We're not drying out their skin. <clears throat> and also um, one thing about um, essential oils, make sure you're getting it from a reliable source. There's a lot of uh, people selling essential oils these days. And the FDA actually, I, I hear, is going to start cracking down on this. Could you imagine if essential oils became illegal, you know, like meeting people in alleyways? Yo, you got that eucalyptus on deck, you know, <laughs> <laughs> being all sneaky, yo, like being all sneaky, you know, yo, I need that lavender, bro. Anyways, um, just get it. Oh, so my, my friend, Melissa, who I learned a lot of this from. Uh, Melissa Diener, um, she was my m manager back in Arizona. She has a website called The Oily Groomer, and it's, spe it's spelled just the way it sounds. TheOilyGroomer.com, also GetGroomified.com, but TheOilyGroomer.com, and she'll have all this information. She has some recipes. You can order the essential oils from her. Um, she does. She's a living Young Living's rep, and she sells you know their Young Living's essential oils. So anyways, um, shout out to Ms. Melissa. Hey, Melissa, you're probably not watching, but anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, so I would do that and, um, or just be like us, get canine Aventix too. It was lazy. I know, and I probably shouldn't, but it's just, it keeps the fleas off of our dogs and they don't itch. So, you know. I mean, we tried a, a natural powder called uh, Diatomaceous Earth mm -hmm. and that, um, I like it because it's all natural, but at the same time, we really didn't have time for it. Man. Just because you have to like you really got to stay on top of it. You have to be on top of it. You have to put it on them like every day. Yeah, like, I every, mean, even if you like even if I do it, do it every day, out. multiple times a day. I think multiple it means multiple applications. Every time you take them out, Pretty when you much. come back in, does because they still itch and there's fleas on them. You know, so I understand diatomaceous earth. It's natural. It's a it's a night you know, a good flea alternative. Um, rather than all the chemicals and stuff, but it just didn't work for us. And bottom line, I just don't like to see my dogs uncomfortable and itching and all that and getting bit by fleas. So, um, and we were tr doing trying the you know essential oils and everything, but again, <laughs> so busy. Oh my god. Okay, moving on. Okay, moving on. Next question was Dottie. Leon. Okay, Dottie. Hold on. Before Leon didn't sign in yet. Oh, Leon. Okay, so anyways, uh, Dottie, we left off a couple of weeks ago. Um, we were gonna start with your question about toothbrushes. Okay. Um, well, honestly, we attended a seminar in Arizona with a vet about you know dental hygiene. Dr. Helen Evans. Helen Evans. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the product. It's how you brush your teeth. So it's the actual 
you know, you can even use a like a rubber the finger brush. The finger brush. You can use the regular toothbrush. Yeah. Or... And the, the way she worded it, she was say she said it's the mechanical act of brushing mm -hmm. that provides all the benefits for the dog's oral health. It's not the product. It's not the toothpaste. It's not the dog wash. It's not the gel. You know. And and she said, think about it this way. Let's just say that um, we use the the most expensive Colgate or Crest toothpaste that we can find or Aquafit. I don't want to leave anyone out, you know, I'm not downing any company, but I'm just saying, let's just say that we buy the most expensive toothpaste that we can find and we smear it on our teeth and that's all we do. You know, we expect results. No, she was saying it's the brushing, you know? And so um, really there's all kinds of dog toothbrushes. And here's, here's, I, I really like Dr. Evans because she was very practical. She was saying that a lot of times they don't like the toothpaste, toothbrush in their mouth. So if you can't, if they just will not tolerate it, they won't accept the toothbrush in their mouth and they're fighting it too much, <clears throat> then she's saying use the finger brush and then, you know, use your finger that with that rubber tip with the bristles on it to brush their teeth. She was saying if they won't tolerate that either, then you go to the greenies, you know, those dental treats, those dental sticks because, or those dental bones because those will, um, and speaking of bones, she was saying that don't give our dogs natural bones because they break their teeth. I have to admit, we still do <laughs> because we we have we cook a lot of bone soup, and you know it's just Korean culture. You know we have a lot of bones and stuff like that, um, and so we give the bones to our dogs. And actually, you know I've never ha had any problems with our dogs' teeth breaking. And actually, our dogs' teeth are pretty clean, and we never brush them. Just to be honest, just real talk. Well, I think it also has to deal with the food, the kind of food that you yeah. eat, and um, how often your dogs are outside. Because our dogs, when they go outside and they're running around in the backyard, they love to pick up sticks and mm -hmm. just chew it, chew at it. And so I it. think, yeah, and just break it apart. I think that action right there helps, you know, maybe like uh, rub off the plaque. Yeah, because if you think about it, she said it's the mechanical act of brushing. So as long as, even with your fingernails, if you can like scrape off the plaque, you know, break it up. Um, anyways, oh, and another thing, um, where did you find Oops. that? changing she she read it on uh banix so banix um is a company that makes a spray that antibacterial antifungal spray it's amazing um it's like neosporin for your dogs but um it's called b-a-n-i-x-x banix b-a-n-i-x-x dot com and then if you go on their website she read a blog where the tear stains very simple to get rid of the tear stains and all the brownness here, brownness on their feet. Um, try changing their water instead of giving them tap water. Try giving them um, bottled Drink. water. You know, drinking water. Or the water that we drink. Try changing their water. You should know the difference. You should see the difference within like a couple of days. What well, from what the article said. Mm -hmm. And, and they know, had pictures. Honestly, um, our dogs like uh, our. Well, our youngest dog, Weenie, he is half Shizu, half Maltese, That's and right. he does not have any tear stains. He did, though, because we were giving him... In the him, beginning, yeah. they did, because we gave him tap water. I never but put that together. Be because we, after we changed his water, he doesn't have those... Uh, nasty smelling tear stains. That's true. I, I didn't even I didn't even think of that because yeah, I, I noticed these days he he doesn't have tear stains. I never really thought about it. You know, I never gave a second thought to it because I'm busy. <laughs> but anyways, um, we were I was actually giving them garden you know water from our garden hose out back. But then, um, I was thinking, well, you know, if the water is better for us, then why not give them filtered water too? We have an Amway filter water. <laughs> and then also like an oxy oxygenated, water. oxygenated water and it's like the alkaline anyways it's really good water so i started giving them that water and oh my goodness i never wow <laughs> anyways um okay i want to get to mike b he asks what is the best way to potty train your dog we are not trainers uh, but what we experienced from the past is being consistent on potty training consistently. It's they're like a baby. If you have a puppy, you have to let him out, him or her out every two hours and then train them yeah. uh, every four hours. And then maybe eventually routine, make a routine, making being um, consistent. Mm -hmm. You have to be consistent. Oh, let's say hi to some God's lady yeah. first. What's up? Yeah, Giselle, Giselle and blue. blue. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, ESP92310. Oh my goodness, they told me their name before. Oh, I forget. I, I, I recognize that ESP. We got some, we got the Rosa sisters in here. Oh, okay, hey, what's up, Rosa sisters? Where are they from? 
Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So C Y R 1983. She wrote. He she. I am wondering what is the best haircut style for a shizu. I take mine and request different ones, but he doesn't write. Please help. You answer this one? All right. I mean, uh, there's not like a, so if you want to go breed standard and you go to the AKC website and read the breed standard, then yeah, just let it grow all the way down. Lots of combing every day. You know, you got to comb it every day. Um, but for, you know, maintenance at home, um, maybe pet. what you can do is um, go detail as in how much hair do you want to leave? on the body how do you want to shape your ears how yeah. you know how about the visor like how long do you want it how short do you want do you like it? it covering the eyes a little bit do you like the muzzle full do you like it nice and clean you know it's just your you know you you uh, find out what it is that you like in the haircut mm -hmm. and just um, you know, explain it to the groomer. As much detail as, as much possible. Detail. Because even though you give as many details as possible, these are words and words are very subjective, you know? And so um, what you what you describe as cute, round, puppy ears, um, it might be different than what I'm picturing in my head. <clears throat> and um, if you're a groomer watching this, here's uh, one thing that I like to do is, um, because before, when people would ask, say like, "Hey, can you give me a puppy cut? I want a puppy cut." I would say like, I would, I would, start, you know, like kind of like, I would, I would try to like um, explain to them, "Hey, you know, a puppy cut is actually this and that," and get all, you know, like, and, and ask them like, "How much?" And this one lady, she just couldn't stop saying puppy cut, and so finally, oh, she's like, "What is a puppy cut?" <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, she just kept saying like, "Do you, don't, you don't know how to do a puppy cut? I just want a puppy cut." And I was like, "Please, could you just explain the haircut to me without saying puppy cut?" And she was like. I don't know, just a puppy cut. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, um, next we what we started doing is um, Break it just down. advertising that we're puppy cut specialists. So one time, this client came in and she was like, "Can I have a puppy cut?" And we were like, "Yeah, we're puppy cut specialists." She was like, "Oh, great! What is a puppy cut?" <laughs> so you know, just go into detail. <clears throat> yeah. Just how much do you want to leave on the body? You know, pictures. Detail. Bring a picture. Oh yeah, pictures. I love seeing pictures. Um, the tail. Do you want the tail fluffy? Do you want it short? Do you want it nice and feathered? You know, um, the ears. Do you want it at an angle? Do you want it long and straight? Do you want it round? Yeah. You know, do you want to shave the ears? You know, it's it, everyone's different. Here's the thing about shizus. They mat up very easily, and they can get out of hand pretty quickly. So sometimes if you want to leave some hair, some length all over the body and legs, and you want them fluffy and nice and cute like a teddy bear, then sometimes um, we, you know, you let your groomer know that that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And then that groomer may have to explain to you that um, that's what we can work towards, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the end goal in mind. But this time we may have to shave them and start over. So, you know, just keep that in mind when you're dealing with the shizu. Okay. Michelle Garcia, I'm fostering a Maltese that was terribly neglected. Ooh. He was infested with fleas and lost most of his fur and has infected skin. He is on antibiotic. Any suggestion on how I should care for him? Yes. Um, I would say, oh, why does that say message retracted? Oh, because I wrote something, but then uh, I deleted it because it Okay, so um, Michelle Garcia, I would say go to dermmagic.com. Their website is D E R M A G I C, dermmagic.com. And they have a whole like um, sh bar shampoo, conditioner, and like a hotspot salve, lotions. They have all kinds of skin products that would help exactly for these situations. They have a blog as well that you can read up on, lots of customer testimonials. Um, but yeah, um, dermmagic.com would probably be the best products um, for a dog that has that kind of stuff going on with their skin. Because here's the thing, a lot of times, and if you watch um, Dr. Adelia, who is the one that started that company, if you watch Dr. Adelia's uh, video um, on that website, she explains that most vets are diagnosing the skin problems wrong. They're, diagno they're, they're treating the skin issues, a lot of the hot spots and all these things that's going on. <clears throat> they're, they're treating it for bacteria when it's actually a fungus problem, a fungal infection. So, and she explains that bacteria and fungus live on the skin at all times, trillions of bacteria and fungus. <clears throat> and so anytime there's like something that throws off that balance, 
<coughs> it's usually fungus that wins over bacteria. And so once fungus starts to go, you know, rampant and just take over, then we start to treat it for bacteria, like anti antibiotic, we're probably killing off more of the bacteria, which is only making that fungus stronger. So a lot of times... <coughs> oh, and you don't want to use oatmeal, right? Because <coughs> it feeds the fungus, no? Some t I mean, so here's the thing. <coughs> I, I heard one place that... And I even I even said it one time on on the one of these Q and A's actually last year, um, that you know don't use oatmeal products like oatmeal shampoos and things like that for skin issues because it feed, the oatmeal cells feed the bacteria and fungus. That that I, I the more I research it, it turns out to be false. Um, a lot of oatmeal shampoos and products are actually found to be very helpful for skin issues and have been proven um, to help with seborrhea and things like that. So. Yeah, um, I would say go to Dermagic.com, order their – Banix as well, uh, Banix, because Banix is antibacterial and, and antifungal. antifungal. So it's killing both at the same – it's just creating a completely sterile environment mm -hmm. kind of. So – but you got to if, – if you're doing that, you have to be consistent and spray every day several times a day and keep it clean. Um, so because once we create a clean slate, a bacteria and fungus is very opportunistic. It's going to move right in. Oops. Anyways, okay. Okay, so – um, ESP92310. Yeah. Let me know if you remember their name. Oh, my All goodness. Right. The water at our shelter turns the dogs brown, feet. Because all the iron is horrible. Iron. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the water. So it's, it is the water. You know, my, what might help with that, though, is um, before you wash them, um, and maybe even after you wash them, uh, why, like while you're brushing them before the bath. Well, if you do. I know a lot of people disagree with me. Um, but if you if you brush before the bath like I do. Use that opportunity to brush in some oils and then maybe those oils will help re re keep some of that oil, you know, water and repel it off. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so Jessica Turek. All right, and then also... Mm. Jessica Turek, okay. Okay, and also um, in response to Mike's question earlier about the dog training, like mm -hmm. the potty training, um, ESP92310 says, I recommend crate training and going from there. And yes. We totally agree because that's how we started. Training. Okay. And if you want to know a little more about crate training, um, I, there was an episode where I interviewed Ian King. And uh, I got to I gotta find out which episode. Anyways, um, there, there's an episode where Ian King was a guest on um, one of our Q &A, live, live Q&A hours, and he gave some great advice on crate training. Um, okay, so Karen, are you still in Buckhead? Actually, we um, have we do private and home grooming in Buckhead. So most of our clients live in Buckhead. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, but you know, we don't have a brick and mortar shop in Buckhead anymore. Okay, Juliet Underwood, how do I disinfect my Andy's clipper blades? One client dog got a foreskin infection oh, from Petco. Oh, okay. Because they probably don't clean their blades. Yeah, so I personally, I use Andy's Cool Care spray, and it's like, a, what, that five-in-one spray? And um, But that spray, I use a spray and the oil, the clipper oil. So because if you just use the spray and... Let's say you're running your clippers, and you spray the clip, the the cleaning, the cool care on the clipper blades. That's not enough. Um, I've I've noticed it wears your blades down because it's clean now, but it's just friction, a lot of friction, right? Mm -hmm. And it says it's lubrication, but not really. Mm -hmm. So what I do is after I clean it, I use a little old toothbrush. I'm not using on the dogs anymore, <laughs> and I brush out, you know, a little bit more of the debris as much as I can, get it clean as possible. Then spray the cool care, and then I put a little line of oil on where the blades, the metal is going to rub. Now, if you want to do the deep cleaning, then use barbicide. You can do barbicide. And barbicide. Um, but, but even then, you take it apart and you still oil it. And there's also a blade cleaner that Andy makes. It's a blue liquid oh, that's yeah. kind of oily, and I really like that. If you, do, if you use a blade cleaner, then you don't actually have to you, you know, oil it afterwards. It cleans and oils it at the same time, and you just... You dip the tip of the of the blade. So you put the blade on your clipper. You dip the tip of that clipper in that blade cleaner solution, that blue oily solution, and you run it for about 10, 15 seconds. Don't immerse it because you don't want to get that blade drive wet. Just the tip where the blades are, you know, going. <clears throat> and so you run it in there. You get it all in there and working, and then it'll clean it, oil it, 
and you just you know wipe it with the towel and that's how I clean my clipper blades yeah Okay, so CYR 1983. They tend to give him a teddy bear face, but he doesn't look good. And sure, thank you guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, everybody has um their version of a puppy cut, their Shoot. version of a teddy bear, <clears throat> or you know, just basically go in there, give them instructions. We have one lady who um you know she wants to rump shorter than yeah. the body she wants you know we have another lady who don't want the legs as fluffy um yeah you know it just everybody is different Some i remember ladies, one yorkie we shaved just the muzzle we shaved just like a just the muzzle and then all this is it out. actually looked pretty cute and she uh, <laughs> the baboon butt oh yeah she wanted she, she wanted requested the baboon requested. butt so you know um just go in there and be just as picky as yeah. you not picky but just describe yeah and also detail. um because you know I, let's just i i just want to be honest i think i lost a client because i was not able to do this fluffy and my wife has actually been telling me about this and and i've been working on it so my muzzles for like doodles it, you know anything with like the curly hair you know that you can make those big puffy round muzzles i i i have somehow i have a problem with that you know it's tough for me i I actually, you know, trim it down. I sculpt it into like this triangle so you can see the eyes. And it's it's like a nice little muzzle like this, but it's never poofy like this. And I and the client, she even printed out some pictures for me. She kept requesting it and now she has not rescheduled. And so, you know, and at this point we have so many people on a waiting list. It doesn't matter, but I do kind of feel this little uh, you know, like, oh man, I wasn't able to do what she wanted, but you know, just just keep in mind, uh, CYR 1983, that we are artists and we all have our own different styles that we, our tendencies. Mm -hmm. we, each artist has their own their tendencies. Own so yeah. you know, my tendency is to trim it down and sculpt it nice and not leave it fluffy and, and nice, full. Clean. Yeah, mine's a nice, clean, sculpted look. You know, not this full look. I'm, I'm working on it though. I like the nice. Full, long eyelashes yeah. and just yeah. kind of shaggy. I want him. I want our little dog to look, you know, neat, but not too sculpted. You know, more yeah. and more shaggy. So yeah. everyone's different. Like me, everyone's I guess a controlled different. shaggy. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. but I, I, you know, for some reason, CYR 1983. Uh, just to be honest with you, I was having trouble creating that look for that client, and so I, it, you know, it seems that I got fired, but. Hey, maybe that's the lesson there too. Maybe um, you're not. Maybe you're with the wrong groomer right now. You know, mm -hmm. maybe he's just not able to give you what you want because that's just not his style. You know, mm -hmm. so maybe you have to find hey, another okay. groomer. It's okay. No hard feelings. Hey, you know? you know. Hey, I miss the dog. Shoot, I love that dog. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, like no we, hard we, feelings. We get an emotional connection with the dogs that we groom because we spend so much time with them, and you know, and we love our dogs that we groom. You know, we're groomers. We we, we love dogs. Anyways, but. It's just business, you know. I understand. I wasn't able to do the haircut that she wanted. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> I'm uh, working so on it. Jessica, wow! I never realized the water was so responsible for the brown staining. I'm gonna start recommending filtered water to clients. Absolutely. Yeah. If they, that's the most natural way. You don't, you know, you don't have to buy angel eyes. You don't have to buy like bleached products to, you know, bleach out the stains. Yeah. Right? You know, no, just change the water. Yeah, give them filter water. All right, so ESP ninety two. Okay, we had to grow. Oh, go ahead. We had to grow my severely matted shizu today. Took us a few hours. Legs, hips, and undercarriage was completely encapsulated. Mm -hmm. It happens, and then feet were already raw underneath. Especially yeah, this time of year. The dogs were like chewing at it. Especially stuff, this right? time of year, and you, you know why this it ha always happens right as we come into fall, and always happens happens right as we come into spring um, for the first few years I really didn't get it I was just like I hate my life I hate grooming you know like every fall and then I started to recognize a pattern I'm like wait a minute I feel this way and this happens every fall the reason why is because every spring too yeah and the spring is not as bad as the fall though oh, um, what the reason why we've run into all such matting and such problems in the fall and it seems like no matter how much we wash the dog and give it a nice haircut it just feels gritty and just doesn't really feel nice and clean and smooth like it does you know like we can usually get it and that's because in the fall they're starting to blow out their undercoat their secondary hairs it's like goose down feathers and it provides it serves the same purpose insulation protection and what they're doing is they're 
shedding it off pretty much. They're, it's detaching from the roots. Mm -hmm. But a lot of dogs like Shizus and Maltese that have this soft, fine, long hair, mm -hmm. it doesn't shed out like the like Labs do. Mm -hmm. You know, these short hair dogs, Labs, Dachshunds, you know, it's short enough it pushes it out so you see it all over your floor. Mm -hmm. But with Maltese and Shizus, it's just hanging out in those pores now. And well, if I mean, the like hair gets fuzzy. The, what you call it, Bichons and Havanese? <laughs> exactly, Bichons, having Catan de Tilliars. Oh so God. around this time, I have a lot of clients where I just it takes a little longer. It takes an extra hour sometimes just to get all that stuff combed out because that's what's happening. Because we we change our clothes, we buy new undershirts, uh, you know, underwear, and we we stay fresh that way. Dogs because they're growing their clothes, they're growing their coat from their skin, their undercoat, which is kind of like their underwear, is is shedding off each season. And, and so that, um, especially with Amaltese and Bichons, those long-haired dogs, we got to comb it out, literally pull it out of the skin so that the follicles now have room to grow their new underwear for this new season. Mm -hmm. So they always stay fresh, you know? All I hope right. that made sense. I was, I, I've been working on that speech for a while now. <laughs> I hope that made sense. All right, so E. Rosa, hit the like button, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, CYR1983, in response to ESP92310, mine tends to get into bushes or just any area that can get stuck in his fur. He's a brat, <laughs> but I love him. I tend to keep his hair at a small length because if it, but I still want to look cute. Look cute. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, if you say you want the hair in a small length, so how much of a small length you want to, you want to, do you want to leave a quarter? Do you want to leave yes. like a half an inch? Do you want to leave like a full inch on the coat, um, mm -hmm. you know, on the skin? So just look at the ruler and maybe just let the, because the blade sizes, they, you know, the groomers will work with numbers. So you have yeah, to let them know. Jack, Jackie Smiley, how we, shape. oh, yeah. Okay. So um, with our client, I asked, our client like how short did you want to go because it is going into winter do you want to keep their coat a little longer since it is colder so and we showed her two different blade sizes and we did one on one side and one on the other side to give her an idea of how much length is coming off how much is on the dog and then she's able to decide from there mm -hmm. now if you own a shop i know you can't do that so that's why it's good to you know, maybe if you have a ruler on hand, I remember at the shop we had a ruler and I would ask them, Yeah, how well, much length do you want to leave on a at dog? At Fields of Fur, this one shop that I worked at in Tempe, Arizona, they actually had a board with, um, like, they had carpet material pretty much, mm. like cashmere carpet, different lengths, That's a great idea. and they shaved it down with the different lengths of the comb attachments to show the clients the length. That's a great idea. Yeah. So you could do something like that even. Mm -hmm. Oh, Barkley. If you go on Barkley's website, they even have posters, posters yeah. where they show the different links on different breeds of dogs, like right. starting from Poodle all the way down to a Golden mm -hmm. Retriever, what it looks like full coat all the way down to shaved. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Brenda Thompson. Hello, June. Love your information. Hey, Brenda. <gasps> oh. Alessandro. What's up, hey. Alessandro? Oh, my goodness, bro. <laughs> hey, June. I'm late to the show, so I'm not sure if you answered the whole flea issue yet. Yes, we did. I'll go back over. I mean, you know what? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a shorter clip of just that explanation mm -hmm. uh, of to your answer, Alessandro, and I'll put it up um, and share it on Facebook and stuff, and I'll send you a link to it. That way, it, you'll see the answer to just your question. Yes. Because you're special to me, bro. Mm -hmm. I love you, bro. I no, it's kidding. I won't oh get weird. <laughs> 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 couple, couple of glasses into some wine. I become a lover. Anyways. Okay, Jackie. <laughs> um, I just got to say I love you both. Very inspirational. Oh, wow. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Jackie. Man. Alan Powell. Got it. What you got? <laughs> Alan Powell, that's Dog Gamut. Dog yeah. Gamut. I love that name. <laughs> I love going through your pictures on Instagram, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Um, Juliet Underwood, love your information from you both. Thanks a million. Thank wow. you for tuning in and yeah, listening. Yeah, I mean. Shoot. Right, so Jessica, I do that too sometimes if I think what the client requests is really ugly. It takes all I can do to what they ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, if you have an, another client 
that comes in and it's just they're just not really happy with the uh, groom just say well let's work towards the mm -hmm. um to the you know ideal the image that you have in mind you know maybe next time or after the groom you can also follow up with a phone call follow up email and ask them are there any changes that you would like for us to make next time and every time they come in make sure you write down a note you know i did like an a head o body you know yeah whatever leg and you know just and i like yeah. to i like to when we had a shop i like to walk out with the comb in my hand yes so when the client checks in with their dog put the comb on the dog and mm -hmm. show them right mm -hmm. there before they leave hey <laughs> we got an issue yeah, here <laughs> no, if they want to keep a really long fluffy puppy cut you know and they don't their the dog is like completely matted make sure you have a comb in hand and you show them um this just, is gonna take some time and you show them like this is gonna take extra work you know some, and that way they see some people charge um dematting fee by the minute some people have just a flat fee um some people just won't tolerate it and just um you know shave your dog and just say hey let's yeah. start over me i personally it's just part of our process because I, ha I have to get the comb through the dog before I wash them. Mm -hmm. So the dematting part is unfortunately just part of the process for me. Um, it's the, it's the hardest why part. Our prices but are higher than. Yeah. And that's why we also try to schedule the client regularly. Mm -hmm. So even though in the fall I do run into these matting issues and just, you know, the, the coat just clumps up grittiness, like, like skin dirt just comes out like little grains of sand. Anyways, um, in the fall, it does, it does, but that's the thing. It's like I, I just accept the fact that in the fall, the leaves are going to fall and I'm going to have to go out and rake some leaves, you know, and there's a little mm -hmm. extra hassle. And I know that in the summer, in the springtime, you know, I'm going to have to bust out the lawnmower again. So these are just things that happen every year that now I just accept. Um, rather than, you know, shake your fist at the sky and blame, you know, mm -hmm. like it's like, you know, I just raked the leaf I just raked the yard, you know, yesterday. Like why the hell are there leaves again on the yard? Yeah. Like what the hell? Uh, <laughs> you know, curse you fall. You know, no. It's no, just no, no. it's just part of it. And yeah. so, you know, I just I just understand that in the fall. I'm going to be spending a little more time, a little more effort on the dogs. Oh, another thing you can do is maybe um, send out an email like, hey, change of season. You know, the dogs are blowing coat. We need extra help from you. And yeah. um, just kind of explain in a way like uh, we need your help in maintaining the dog's coat because they are going through this coat change. And um, if you could, you know, take some time out of your day to comb use a comb not a brush but a comb to comb mm -hmm. through the yeah dog if it's hair. a long haired dog because if you say yeah. a brush they might use like slicker brush and that doesn't yeah. really do much well i mean for a short haired dog yep that, that's the thing it's uh, like, it just depends on the coat you know short haired dogs if you tell them hey your dog's blowing coat because it's changing the season they're gonna be like yeah i'll show you in my house yeah, it's all over but all they over. get it but yeah. a lot of times when you're dealing with a poodle owner or Bichon owner and you tell them, hey, your dogs are blowing coat, it's changing season, like me, they sometimes think, does this groomer even know what they're talking about? My dog doesn't shed. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. I understand poodles don't shed. They don't but shed they out. <laughs> but they do change their undercoat every season to stay fresh. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. So, E. Rosa, I use some drops of, when is, what is this? Gentian Violet. Right, Gen Gentian, Gentian Violet. To make my dog's hair more white. Okay, I mean, I guess we can Google. I will yeah, Google we it later. What's Gentian yeah. Violet? Okay, can you read God's Lady first? I want to look that up. So, would you say we br we should brush a little more during the change of seasons? Yes, yes definitely. Yes, yes. Uh, much more regularly. And so, if you know, if we're gonna talk ratios, my perfect ratio would be six one. You know. So if I'm going to wash my dog once a week, then I should probably be brushing them six days a week, right? Because a week has seven days. So let's just say I'm washing my dog every week. Then six days out of those seven, I should be brushing them, in my opinion. Um, I also wouldn't recommend weekly baths anyways, and I know a lot of people disagree with me on that. Um, but... But if you are going to bathe, make sure you thoroughly, thoroughly brush as yeah. in like under the arms, inside the thighs, exactly. the belly. Lift the ear, brush behind the ears. Mm -hmm. yeah, just make sure you brush really thoroughly. Yeah. Okay, so ESP92310. I'll have to Facebook message you some pictures of the Shizu. 
it really was a task. Poor boy had to be sedated. Wow. Yeah. That's never good. That's sad. Um, Jim, Jim Bayan. Hi, guys. Jim Hi, Bayan. Jim. That's, I haven't seen his name before. Or awesome. watch him be like a, <laughs> I watch every week. What is <laughs> <laughs> Alan Powell, most people around here want. A seven. Like, yeah. You know what? You know what? Seven all over. Seven AO. Seven all over. Um, <laughs> you know, we we ran into some people that just want short all over just because they're busy. They don't have time to maintain a dog. Um, there are also people out there who want a seven because they don't know what else to ask for. So well, and I don't mind seven all over. A lot of salons that I would work at, um, you know, it's just that's just how they had their clients trained. They would come in, I would pick out the card. It says seven AO, which yeah, means seven, seven all, all over, over, just head to toe, just strip them. So what I would do usually, if it says seven all over, I would break the rules because I'm a rule breaker. Um, I I I always like to test my limits. See what I anyways. Rather than just do a seven all over and shave them down with a seven. What I would do is I, I do seven from the back of the ears down here into the neck and all over the body. And I stop and I skim off around the, around the shoulders, right? And then in the back, I go down to about like a Westie pattern almost, like on, you know, on the back. And then I do the legs with the four, right? Because a four is a little bit longer than a seven, but not long enough where anyone will really notice. Mm -hmm. But it does give that a little bit more proportion and balance mm -hmm. to the dog. So I do a, seven, a four on the legs if I did a seven on the body. Then even the head, I'll do like a four or a three on the head and just shape it nice, right? And then when they pick up, a lot of people don't even really notice. But yeah. then when they call back, they say, I don't know what it is, oh but whoever God. did my dog the last time, let me get that same person back. And I would always get request clients back because it's just a little different. And that's the thing. Like I said in the, in the last episode, it's not about being better. It's about being different and different. Is better. No, I'm saying. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm getting a little bit excited. I'm getting a little excited. I'm drunk. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, CYR 1983. Have to go practice softball with my daughter. Oh, okay. But thank you so much for answering my question. Have an amazing evening. Awesome. Thank you. I hope you have an awesome time. Yeah. Uh, Cast Castle Boutique. Hi, Kimmy. Hi. Whoa. Yes. Yes. Take it over my show. Take it over my show. No, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Jessica, my grams Shizu chews herself in the summer after first frost it stops. Okay. Any recommendations on what I can use to stop? What I can use to stop or help her? She on one of the best rated grain free foods. Vet recommended. Hmm. Well, it's. Mm. Well, and Alan answered that. He's yeah, saying probably allergies. Yeah. Yeah, because we do have some dogs that go through, just like how in the spring, in the summer, he'll yeah. sneeze a lot. You know, Not anymore, like, though. Well, you're getting better, but, you know, in the beginning, for a while, he used to sneeze a lot because of the spring. And I've heard that dogs go through the same thing. They have seasonal allergies. Mm, um, yeah. But... And Dr. St. Anji, Dr. St. Anji, he, he runs a vet clinic called Buckhaven Animal Clinic. But anyways, he told me that... Um, with us, when we experience seasonal allergies, we sniff, we sniff, we, you know, sniffle, all of that, eyes and water. sneeze. Eyes water. He was saying with dogs, you'll never see a dog sniffle and sneeze um, during spring or fall. He was saying their allergies always show up in their skin, and it's called atopy, atopy, a t o p y, atopy. Uh, but anyways. Um, Jessica Turek. Thanks, Alan. Yes, I'm pretty sure it is, but it drives me crazy. I tried Benadryl. I don't want to give her Apoquil. Ap Apoquil. Apoquil, yet. I feel bad for her, and I hate the way her coat gets. Huh. How about, um, try using a comb to comb through the coat, and then, um, use Bannix and spray Bannix on there. In my experience, usually when I go to a client's house, and especially new clients who are like, oh, I heard about you. My Shizu chews her feet all the time. She's brown. You know, he has terrible eyes. He keeps me up all night. You know, when I go to those clients and I, and I start combing through those feet, I notice that there's a lot of crud in that skin. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff comes out. Just and sometimes it explodes out as, yeah. I'm, as I'm combing it out a little bit. Stuff will just kind of pop out and like oh my god you know like it's crazy so much that's just packed in those pores 
no wonder they're chewing at it. No wonder they're licking at it because it's bothering them. It's making their skin feel tight. So sometimes a lot of our our first time clients, they will bite me and they'll ah and go nuts because it hurts so much. But I I let them and as crazy as that sounds, I let them bite me because I I let them know I understand that it's hurting you and this is how you're feeling and just let me do this because it's going to help you right and that's what i'm thinking mm -hmm. and hopefully my thoughts translate through my body and they feel it through my energy <clears throat> and so they usually you know tolerate it and not they don't they never bite to hurt me either they just bite to kind of communicate with me like ah you know and i always tell them like i understand i'm sorry you know and then the second visit and the third visit usually by the third visit they love me because now their feet feel comfortable you know and and that's been my biggest advertisement, how the dogs greet me when I come back. Oh, my God. We have had a, uh, what is he, a golden retriever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, every time he would come, he would give us a hug. <laughs> yeah, like, us... run back and give us a hug. Oh, my God. I love uh... it, love it, love it. Okay, so anyways, um, can we answer yeah. okay, God's first lady? God's lady first. Thanks okay, for perfect. the brushing tips. Okay, Alan Powell, seven body, two comb head. Oh, Are nice. Ooh, he's yeah. doing a one up, one upping me. Mm. <laughs> Jim, I agree. They're just pets. Uh huh. Do what you can. Yeah, yes. yeah. We do just, what we can to try to help them live a more comfortable life. Yes. You don't want to, um, like. Oh, dog won't stay still because you want the dog to have a good experience so that they'll come back to you and then every time you groom him or her then it'll be easier yeah you know you won't have to fight with them so much so also while you're grooming i know you're on the time crunch sometimes but it's also good to think about the pet too mm -hmm. maybe giving uh if the dog is just way too fussy what if you put him down and just walk him outside maybe mm -hmm. he has to go pee maybe he has to go poop yeah you know yeah and sometimes just giving them something else to think about breaking it up just break time yeah sometimes that helps too okay alan two comb looks <sighs> better than a four i don't like to do shorter than a two comb or a four blade on the base it needs to have some oomph <laughs> and roundness yeah Only baby a seven when chin Mats would ruin the round. Head. Yeah, yo, I need some curves on my woman. You know what I'm saying? I need some. No, I'm kidding. Like... All right, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> anyway, get a hold of myself. <laughs> okay, Jackie, June coughs a lot. Allergies too. Oh no, my He's throat was dry just... because I was. I, I. This is like what my fourth glass. Oh my goodness. See, I'm still working on my first glass. I got like this much left. Yeah, and yeah, okay, already so... on like his third. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me that if you have to ask then you probably are an alcoholic. <laughs> After I asked her, do you think I'm an alcoholic? I don't drink during the week, just to let you know. This is our, I'm not, I'm not working tomorrow, you know, like. Well, actually, Saturday nights during the live <laughs> this event is, is the when only we time look we drink. forward to drinking wine. <laughs> it's the only time that we People have. People are like, man, June has a problem. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I probably do. <laughs> Jim, seven body, three eighths comb head. Yes, mm -hmm. I like that too. E Rosa, it was great hearing from you once again. It's nine forty-five here now. Eat something before sleep. Oh, oh E Rosa, us. yeah, have Thanks. a good night. You're in Brazil. Oh my goodness, awesome! That's so amazing. We need to go to Brazil. I would love to. I would yeah. love to go to Brazil. Okay, Alan, I have a few clients with a chewing problem. It's allergies and have tried salt water soakings all the way to taking steroids. Steroids? I noticed they do better if they kept out of wet grass yeah I mean and the thing is all every dog is different I mean some dogs really just are prone really oh prone to allergies you know uh, we have a client um he's okay in his backyard but when he goes on a play date to their friend's house oh he's allergic to their grass yeah there's a certain type of grass that they have in their friend's backyard that he's allergic to. It's Isn't crazy. That crazy. Every dog is different. Yeah. Yeah. So E Rosa, thank you so much for your time and dedication. Thank you. Thank you so much for yeah, your time. Oh my goodness. To, Watching to this. Watch. Shoot, if if you if nobody watched this, it would just be two drug couples. <laughs> I'm not even drunk. No, you're not drunk. No. She's responsible. <laughs> Show Bob. My dog is doing great on Show Bob. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, that scared me. I remember show. Hey, how are you, show Bob? Oh my goodness! My dog is doing great on 
Apocwell. I think it's Apocwell. She's been on it for three years. Oh, okay. okay. Wow. We haven't used it, so we are not able to <coughs> tell you yes or no. Yeah. So, um, Alan, only thing I've seen help is giving a dog CBD oil. Actually, at Super Zoo, CBD oil for the dogs are They even had, popular. like, hemp oil. They even had hemp oil, yeah. yeah well, I mean, it was CBD, yeah. Was, oh, yeah. So next time, um, if you're able to, Alan, let's try to meet at Super Zoo. That's... Oh yeah, Pretty we're gonna cool. be there next year in um, June, I think. They're yeah, gonna be the doing it in June. End of June, yeah. Yeah. Okay, God's lady first. My Shizu takes half a tablet daily to help relieve the digging in his skin. I didn't realize the paws and hold that much debris. Oh yeah. Yeah, the oh, paws, yeah. the armpits, mm -hmm. um, all those like high friction areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, it's because even the front of the paws is constantly rubbing against grass and dirt and everything is picking all that stuff up and so yeah um okay horses equestrians if you talk to any any good equestrian every time they ride the horse and they take off the saddle they brush the horse especially mm -hmm. where the saddle was mm -hmm. even if they don't brush the entire horse they'll brush where the saddle was because it caused friction and rubs you know that's the same idea with their dogs every time we walk our dogs we really should be brushing where their collar is where you know their feet where it was rubbing against the ground um i personally don't i'll be honest with you because i walk my dogs i feed them and i you know get to the next thing on my to-do list um but my dogs also don't really itch themselves because mm -hmm. i do brush them more than i bathe them and i do schedule time to brush them you know Jackie Verdina, good night from Texas. My Whoa, sister's in Texas. Yeah. So maybe when we go to Texas to visit her, we can stop by and visit. I'll never forget Texas. Driving through Texas Beautiful. with my broke down Pacifica. Oh, that too. Oh my goodness. Going 35, 40 miles per hour through Texas. But that oh my God. the uh architecture there. Oh yeah. Oh, my God. oh beautiful. beautiful. Dallas, Fort Worth. Dallas. <clears throat> All right, Jim, 648 here in Calgary. Calgary, Alberta. Alberta. That's Canada, right? Canada. Nice. Jessica, I'm having a problem with my boss and they, they're not drying the dogs completely. Oh, my God, I've been through that, too. They just shoved them in cage dryer. I was taught to dry all the all the way straight. Drives me so crazy. Any advice? Uh, so when we went to an AKC show, it wasn't a grooming show. It was an AKC show down in South Georgia. And we went, um, we, Cindy, what is her name? Cindy, Powell? no. no. <sighs> Hogan. Hogan. Cindy Hogan. She's <laughs> a volunteer at Fur Kids. It was Small Dog Rescue. She, um, like amazing lady she told us about um this akc show down in south georgia <clears throat> and so we went and we talked to some cavalier owners and they told us most of the dogs suffer from skin issues especially their feet and their ears because owners don't dry their dogs Thoroughly, completely yeah. because it stays wet and the when the moisture stays no next to the skin for that long bacteria starts to build up it starts to get yucky and nasty and she was saying that most like when they wash their dogs for example they don't they don't dry them completely and so they end up sour in a few days and the haircut doesn't turn out that great because if you dry them all the way and fluff them out not only is it easier to do the haircut but you will have like less sticky outies too yeah, sticky out here. <laughs> so when I was learning to groom, Barbara, Barbara Johnston, um, owner of Swanky Paws in Lawrenceville, um, when she was teaching me, she was like, hey, can you get a little bit of those sticky outies? And I was like, what's a sticky outie? She goes, hairs that stick out. <laughs> just like that. I was like, oh, <laughs> it's just like what it sounds like. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> All right. Anyways, Jim, maybe fertilizer. You know what? Maybe. What? With the allergies? Ah, uh, maybe the fertilizer and the yeah. I was maybe. about to say, did I? I didn't <laughs> pass any gas. Or did I like? <laughs> okay, Alan. Gravity pulls it all to the paws. Yes, it goes down right to mm -hmm. the paws. Yep. Yep. Jessica. Okay, so brush and comb daily and Bannix. Thanks. 
Alan, I give my Chesapeake oh CBD oil. I'll try Chesapeake that. Bay Retriever. Oh my God, it's a beautiful. brown dog with curly coat. It's oh, just the one that was, so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh my okay, goodness. So, anyways, I'll try that for the Shizu as well. Jim, always clean bottom of paws. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Alan Powell, that's why paws are always so hard to dry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I spelled I spelled out Banix B A N I X X. Perfect. Alan hashtag physics. Hashtag done. Done. <laughs> show Bob, <laughs> laugh out loud. Been a while since I caught a live show. Super Zoo twenty eighteen. I'll try and make it. As oh well. my goodness! Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Sheila. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Glad to finally catch your live stream. Woo! What kind of shampoo would you suggest for water dogs? AKA it says faux. Faux water dogs. Faux water dogs. So she must be from. No, it's kidding. <laughs> it's the weekend. <laughs> AKA Black Lab. Okay. So, what kind of shampoo would you suggest for water dogs, Black Labs? Here's the thing. Um, for me, shampoo does not matter as much as brushing. Just like Dr. Helen Evans was saying that the mechanical act of brushing the teeth is more beneficial for the teeth's health for the oral health of the dog than the product. Same idea. I believe that it's the mechanical act of brushing the dog's coat that's, that provides more benefit for the dog's skin health than any product that you can use. That being said, my favorite shampoo right now is, um, what is it called? Relic. Oh. <coughs> Relic. Oh, Relic. I'll spell it out. R-E-L-I-Q. -E and right, my, right now, my favorite um, flavor, I guess, my favorite scent of Relic, because they make several different ones. They make jasmine, um, lavender, um, pomegranate. pomegranate, and uh, green tea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like pomegranate the most. I, I just really like that scent. And so I get Relic pomegranate shampoo. That's oh. what I've been using. And I like their um, lavender spray because when a dog is going crazy, you just missed it. And, oh, my God, it calms them down. It helps calm them down. And dogs, because um, their nose, their sense of smell is the most powerful scent that a dog has. And that's how they experience their world is through their sense of smell. When you spray some lavender in the air, it helps calm them just like it helps calm us. Also, peppermint helps calm as well. And so I hear peppermint, um, like fa fa pe peppermint facial shampoo, um, Envirogroom. Envirogroom makes a really good peppermint facial shampoo. Um, mm -hmm. That helps calm them, calm the nervous dog down. Also, if you're grooming a nervous dog, then put a peppermint in your mouth. Put a piece of mint in your mouth. And that way when you breathe, it, the dog will smell the mint and that will calm them as well. So, um, but yeah, going back to your, what kind of shampoo would you suggest? I like Relic. That's the one that I'm using right now. I also like Advet. Um, Advet makes a great mm -hmm. shampoo and conditioner. I like their smell because it's not too strong. <clears throat> yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, really, for me, it's more about the brushing, though. As long as you're brushing your black lab. And if you have a black lab, it has that lab coat, I would suggest using a rubber curry brush, a slicker brush, and maybe a Coat King. But a cooking, you know, if you don't really know how to use it sometimes. So if really, if you just use a rubber curry brush and a slicker brush mm -hmm. on your black lab, and then maybe a ferminator just to finish it off, uh, you will you might notice that you don't even have to wash your dog. I was reading a Jack Russell Terrier book at the library, and it was saying that Jack Russell Terriers never need a bath. As long as you keep stripping out their older coat, and the, their live hairs are always intact, their live hairs and the oils on their skin will repel off the water. So if your friend, they said if your furry friend ever finds himself stuck in the rainstorm, his coat will act as a natural protecting barrier. So you don't want to wash your dog too much, especially a Jack Russell Terrier, and I would say a Black Lab as well. Mm -hmm. If I was the owner of your Black Lab, I would be brushing them Probably once a week, just to be honest, because I'm late. <laughs> I'm not late. I'm just I'm just busy. But once a week, I would spend about a good hour brushing my lab, and then wash them. Maybe once every three months. Mm. 
Oh, we have a dog, a client, um, well, few clients that we <sighs> just do the brush out service. That's it. We call like, it a dry we, bath. We call it a dry bath. And I've never watched them. We've never watched them. Yeah. And they love well, it. I watched them the first time just because we had to get them up to par, kind of mm -hmm. like a house cleaner coming in for the first time. But after we did that first wash, now it's maintaining every two, three weeks. And plus, because they, they're coming in, you know, we have them scheduled on a regular rotation. So they come in and we just go in there and do the work. And yeah. And, and, and both, because there's two clients right now that we're doing that with. We have not want, one is a black chow mix. One is a yellow lab, <laughs> a giant <laughs> yellow lab. <clears throat> but anyways, they both tell me that their dogs smell better and look cleaner than they ever have when they were getting washed regularly. And when they run around, they the dirt comes off. They get muddy. And but then by the time off. their dog dries off, the, the dirt mud and dirt gone. just literally falls off the coat. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, Alan. Alan calls it stragglers. Nice. Okay. Okay, before we go on to this one uh -huh. here, um, I want to jump to my phone okay <laughs> okay um so we have a message that came in from facebook her name is stacy and she's from canada stace i know i i, well, I don't i don't know her but i recognize <laughs> her we have dealings with okay, on so, facebook <laughs> so anyway stacy from canada i'm such a goof i am watching and it's awesome but no clue how to ask or take part on the comments lol okay, okay can is there anybody on there that can tell us real quick how is there a well chat there should be button? a laugh live chat box on the right of the screen um and that's where we're actually reading the comments and interacting with okay so, so i guess i can reply that okay too late to ask live, but what's your absolute must questions when booking a new client? Everyone around here is so laid back, I feel silly asking for information. I'm so not a business part of this, just you, and the two of you make a great team. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, so when, when, when a person calls us first, wait, contacts me, they usually call me first, and I say, hey, I'm super busy. I thank you so much for being patient with me because they usually leave, leave a voicemail and I get back to them like a week later. I, I tell them like we're actually completely booked out for the rest of the year. But if you would like to get on our schedule, then please contact my wife and they email her. And now. Okay. So wait, rewind back. So <laughs> let's say you're starting your business and you need to have clients on a regular uh, rotation. We were, I forgot what we were listening to, but they mentioned you are never available today or tomorrow. So Brenda, her name is Brenda. It was a groomer at Atlanta Pet Fair like four years ago. That's right. That's right. It was a workshop that I attended, one of her mm -hmm. lectures. Brenda, I forget her last name, but she's a groomer in South Georgia. Okay. So anyways, um... What's your absolute must questions when booking a new client? Okay, so when I'm booking a new client, I I like to ask, and there's nothing wrong with asking. So I like to ask, one, how often do you, like how many weeks in between do you go? So that I know, okay, so this person likes to get groomed every two weeks, every four weeks, every six weeks. Once a know, year. Or one, you know, like quarterly, <laughs> once every three months, or like once a year. So um, just make sure you find out what their rotation is like first, okay? And then number two is um, you you can you cannot but since you're saying that your clients are more laid back maybe just ask them what day of the week works best for you yeah um we have what some, days do you prefer what days do you prefer what time do you prefer um we have a client that prefers um monday tuesday wednesday we have a client that prefers thursday mornings or friday mornings you know so it's good to ask these questions don't be shy about it you don't have to ask a lot of questions just one how often do you go in between the grooms and two um well really let's say let's say a new client calls right mm -hmm. let's just go through a little like role play first thing you would ask is what type of dog is it right and then let's say i say well it's a mixed it's a mixed breed you know then um we would ask well what type of coat does it have does it have a long curly right, coat does right. it have a short coat and we mm -hmm. find try to find out more about the dog right uh, what kind of is he aggressive 
That's yeah. a good question to ask. Is your dog aggressive? And most people say, <laughs> I remember one time I asked the lady, does your dog bite? Because uh, she was, you know, the things that she was describing made me feel like maybe I should be concerned here. So I asked her, I was like, did your dog bite? And she goes, well, he shouldn't. And I was like, of course your dog shouldn't. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, um, this is something that I just uh, wrote out in the beginning of the show. This will help with you with asking questions. Um, okay. And let them know your price. Let them know your price. Right from the beginning. If they say that's too much for me, I understand. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. And just send them off. Now, um, okay. So first, this is what we came up with. Okay. So we have short coats. Okay, and I'm then nervous. we have double coats, and then we have drop coats, and then we have curly coats. So first, let's start with this short coat and the double coats. You're going to have small, medium, large, extra large, and then XXL would be like... Newfoundlands. Newfies, like those really big dogs. Okay, so anyways, you're going to have... Okay, so small dogs up to 20 pounds is going to be X amount. Okay, and the short coat is, is not going to take as long as a double coat. Double coat would be like a golden retriever, husky. Or a chow, husky. Okay, so, or um, what is Charlie? Smoy. Smoy, oh my god. Okay, so anyways, medium, this is the, uh, you know, the pounds, large, extra large. And you extra. choose. Some people you just stop choose. here. Some people only do small, medium dogs. They don't do large dogs. Right. You choose. And then you have the drop coat, and then you have the curly coat. So with these two you need haircuts, right? So um, some drop coats would be like Maltese, um, Shih Tzu's, and ha have any? Oh, mm -hmm. Like long straight long, hair. Long straight hair. And then um, you're gonna have a bath price, and then you're gonna have a groom price. So they'll probably come every four weeks for the bath, and then every, you know, and then four weeks after that, they'll come in for a groom. Okay, so then you'll have a small, medium, large, you know, a price scale. And then for a curly coat, you're gonna, same thing. Curly coat would be for doodles, you know, any like poodles, or any dogs with uh, curly hair. They're going to take a lot more time. So then, you know, they might be more for the bath and mm -hmm. for the groom. So if you have a, something simple like this, and instead of having like um, nails are this much, nail grinding is this much, or anal glands is this much, ear cleaning, yeah. whatever. Instead of all the add-ons, just, Put one price there, and then let in them our opinion. know. In our opinion, it's it's easier for us, and it's less confusing for the customer because yeah. if you let them know, hey, it's gonna be a hundred dollars for a medium curly coat dog, and that includes ear cleaning if necessary, teeth brushing, nail um, trimming, and filing, um, yeah, checking the anal glands. Include it all. In all is anything included. that involves a proper girl. Anything that's considered hygiene related right because that's what grooming is right hygiene so anything so ear cleaning that's part of hygiene mm -hmm. nail filing mm -hmm. part of hygiene you know so i i just i don't upcharge i don't have any extra charges for any of these things it's just one price just one price yeah for me because i like to keep it simple mm -hmm. and i've noticed that it's easier for the clients too you yeah. know so then they have an idea okay so um, my bath price is going to be this much and then my haircut's going to be this much. Yeah. That's you don't want to turn into a science project when you're when clients are trying to figure out what kind of groom service they want, you know? Right. And you know, at least every month they'll know exactly how much yeah. um, they're going to be. Speaking spending. of getting too technical in the beginning, I used to try to explain all the science behind the skin, the science behind what I'm doing to my clients. I would see a glaze go over their eyes. Yeah. I would lose them, you know? Oh my goodness. But yeah, like now, I don't even go into the science, nothing. I just tell them, hey, I love your dog. I want to do the best. Just keep it simple. Mm -hmm. All right. So last traction hero. Hi, guys. I'm a new bather and learning to groom slowly in a busy shop. I loved your books. Wow. Oh. Wow. Any tips from, for learning from the ground up? Patience. Be patient yes. and don't be so hard on yourself. Yes. It takes time. Because mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and the thing is, you don't even know what you don't know. Right. So right. you'll start discovering things. We don't even know what to ask a lot of times, you know? So. Yeah. Jacqueline. Lebovich. <laughs> nice. 
Hi. Okay, ESP92310. I'll have to put a mint tray out at the shelter. When people come through, they'll unknowingly be calming the dogs when they meet them. Cool idea. Uh, awesome idea. Wow. So awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Just spray some mint oil on them. I know. Right? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay, Michelle Garcia. What was the name of that link for the shampoo or flea allergist? Allergies, I must be enjoying your wine virtually uh, magic. next time, you yeah. know, drink. Oh, my Let's goodness. Go. I'm already done. By... All right. Uh, no, it's Derm Magic. You want to spell it out? D-E-R-M-A-G-I-C. -E Derm Magic. Derm Magic. I just spelled it in And there. the lady who started it, her name is Dr. Delia. I met her a couple Dr. times. How do you spell her last? Uh, A-D-E-L-I-A. Okay. Um, she has some amazing information that she's put out in her blogs and everything. So, uh, just a great person, and I love the reason why she started her company. Anyways, okay, Alan, Black Lab need a little bit more nourishment in their shampoos and conditioners because a sign really takes a toll on their coat. The sun. Oh, oh the sun really takes. The sun really takes. Not the, the sun. sun. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, and also um, I learned this from Michelle Knowles at um, East San Bernard, their skin program. I was know, just program. about to mention that. Um, medium coats like a black lab need more minerals. Mm -hmm. Short mm -hmm. coats like a pit or like a dachshund, um, they need more oils. Mm -hmm. And then long oh, coats long need more collagen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jessica, yes, I have a chest. Chess a big bay retriever. Yeah. She's the best. Beyond loyal. Never seen a breed so dedicated. Yeah. Their humans. Now yeah. I had the privilege to groom a Chesapeake Bay Retriever oh, um, before we moved out to Arizona. Oh my God, she was amazing. No, isn't Jersey a uh, Chesapeake Chesapeake Bay? Uh, no, Jersey is a chocolate lab, a big chocolate lab. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, Alan, if you're on your desktop computer, it should be on the side. Hold on, can you read that so I can? It should be on the me? side that you can click on highest chat if you want your phone if you want your phone you have to scroll all the way down okay okay alan so powell to the rescue dog gamut i love you <laughs> okay, can you read the next one uh jessica jessica turek the breeder told us not to bathe our chessy ever any dry shampoos or sprays we could use yes mm -hmm. <clears throat> i love equi sprays that's e q y s s okay. They have a premier spray that I love, avocado spray that I love. Oh, I really yeah, like the avocado really spray. Good. And right now, I'm actually using a Microtech spray that they make um, for itching dogs because we're coming into the fall. Mm -hmm. I'm running into a lot of dogs that are itching. So I'm using the Equis Microtech spray right now. Um, so yeah, those sprays, I love Equis brands. Equis, they started out, they make horse products, I think. Um, because it's equis, equine, you know, but now they're making, um, well, not now, but you know, they make dog products as well. Excellent brand. Um, Jessica Turek, the breeder. Okay. I'm going to read that. The Theodora Paz. Been a while. Oh, Theodora Paz. What's up, Hi. Theodora? <clears throat> Been a while. Happy Saturday. I got a new puppy brother for my Toby. No. He's a four year old rescue Shizu. I noticed that he has blondish brownish hair, which is good amount, but a bit thin. How to groom timid. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, that's good. It's already 912. We're going over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, hold on. <clears throat> so oh, Theodora Paz, oh, how no! to groom her. What are you doing? How to groom her Shizu, who's okay. timid. I mean uh, I think I think rather than me trying to explain it right now, it, it would be better just to watch that uh, one grooming video that I made, um, grooming a grachi shizu. Um, that might help. Uh, Jessica Turek. Oh, but she said it's a puppy, right? Oh, uh, he's a four-year-old rescue. Uh, rescue. Oh, he's four years. Yeah, well, grooming oh. the um, grachi shizu, he was a rescue. Remember, he was right. about four years old. Um, Theodore has my only um, uh. I guess recommendation would be to um, take it slow and introduce him to each tool, let him smell it. And then when you're using it, maybe feed him a treat, tell him he's a good boy. Associated with, associate with something good. You don't want to force him into it because then he's going to fight you every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
The breeder told us not to bathe our chassis ever. Oh, no, no, that's okay. That's yeah. it. Okay. Uh, PM, I love you guys. Watch the dog I couldn't groom and my mind was blown. Whoa, awesome. wow. Actually, when I watched that video over again, which I haven't in a while, but when I did, I, I, I kind of cringed a little bit. I was like, man, I made a lot of mistakes. But anyways, um, ESP92310. What got me here was a video on how to groom an aggressive Shizu. Been hooked since. Wow. Oh, Thank awesome. you. Okay, hold on. Okay, so Dermagic. Uh -huh. Okay, Doctor. We gotta start wrapping this up. Is it Dermagic.com? Yes. Yes. Theodore Pass. <sighs> Thank you, God's Lady First. It is Dermagic.com. Uh -huh. Theodore Pass. I totally recommend Dermagic. Thanks for the shout out before. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. Jessica, thanks for all the info. Yeah, I can't wow. Even an hour went by yeah. so fast. Okay, Alan Powell. All coasts need more Allens to groom them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Cass Castle Boutique. Good night, Kimmy and June. Good night. Thank you. That's cute. Grooming mm. and grouchy. Grouchy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Wait, I was reading and you said <laughs> Theodore Paz. Hey, no more, no more for you. No more drinking for you. Well, I just there's only a little okay. bit left. All right, you can, you can drive. That's cute. <laughs> it's that he's very skittish and shaky. Poor baby, not angry. Yeah, but yeah. I would exactly what Kimmy said. Introduce the and, and the technique is actually called name and explain. That's mm. that's the term for it called name and explain. Yeah. It's it's by um the person who coined that term was her name is Casey Cover. That's C O V E R, Casey Cover. And um the technique is basically you show the tool, you give it a name so the dog understands what you call it. And then you explain what you're gonna do to the the dog, what you're gonna use it for, and before you actually do it. Nadine. Nadine. Oh, Nadine. that's right. I knew it. I knew it. Why well, didn't know? I got your message, <laughs> Nadine. Oh my God, these pictures <clears throat> are amazing. That dog. Oh my God, oh my you did a really good job. Look at how peaceful he looks. You know, he's passed out. Great job. That's ESP. Okay, yeah. if I can show you guys, well, I guess I guess I can. Well, will it really show? Because really sometimes, it, yeah. Not really. I wish you guys could see this. It's amazing, this dog. <laughs> this person said, finish getting lit. <laughs> oh, you guys have a great night and finish getting lit. I'm about to. <laughs> okay, God's Lady First had a great time. Good night, Kimmy and Jen. Oh, good night, everybody. Good night, God's um, Lady First. And I'm oh sorry. God, I'm sorry for acting so inappropriately in front of God's Lady First. Okay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Have a good night. Myself. Um, okay. and Stacy says, "Laugh out loud." No laptop. That's why. But all good. You're awesome to reply. And take the time to explain. I'm listening as I'm typing. I always ask them to send me a pic of their pup as far as nice. guys. I'm a sucker for working more than I'm paid, but so happy to hear all your advice. Who needs any schooling? Keep up the Saturday night fever. Wow. Oh, awesome. Well, God's lady first and had a great time. Good night, Kimmy and June. Good Thank night. Theodore Pass. Thanks so much, guys. Good vibes coming from Whittier, California. Nice. Wow. Puppy love for life. Yes. All right. Yes. Shoot. Yes. If I ever go to Whittier, California, I'm going to crash. God's Lady your... First Carla for you all. Okay. God's Lady First is Carla. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Carla. Carla. Thank you for being so understanding with me. Cass Castle Boutique. Love you both. Nigel. Hey, join late. We'll watch later. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Wow. Yes. Okay. Is that Nadine? Okay. So, Nadine. That's... That was a two person job. Wow. Oh my At god, least the, the pictures. Oh my god. It's amazing. Impressive. Amazing. Good job. Really. Nigel Gittens. Neil here. Okay. Hey, what's awesome. up, Neil? Thanks. Right, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you guys. Good night, everybody. See you. Oh, wait. Well, let me check the schedule. Next well, Saturday. I'll announce it on Facebook. On our Facebook page. If you guys follow June the Groomer on our Facebook page, I'll announce when our next live QA um can be. Um Mm, I don't know because next weekend I like to go to the jazz festival and the next weekend is the jazz festival is going on. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll keep you posted on our schedule um, maybe on the 21st. Yeah. But, you know, honestly, thank you guys so much for being so patient with me. Like I, I know in the beginning I was responding to everybody like, you know, like pretty, pretty regularly. But I, it's just. 
so many has been coming in and we're trying to um, and I'm literally grooming all day long seriously yeah. and we're trying to um, you know set aside a day block out some time to actually get back to uh, replying the YouTube comments like we did before so I really apologize some of them has been I well, you thank know making you. Years, we have such but patient thank you so much understanding people watching our show Enjoy that jazz girl yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome well, thank you guys so much <laughs> Um, I'm waving like y'all can see me. <laughs> I'll be back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we'll be stupid. To that's not too stupid. Silly. We'll be silly together. No, it's not oh my silly goodness. at all. Why would I use that kind of word? Oh, man. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> all right. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, Nadine. Have a good one. We'll see you guys uh, in a few weeks, maybe. Oh my God. I'm like, why can't I use a mouse? Oh, okay. Right Dallas here. That's right. That's why we're. <laughs>